first, May the 6th, the first Sunday of May, is our annual potluck dinner here in this dance hall. I couldn't remember what it was. Everybody is invited. If you can, bring a covered disc. If you can't, come anyway. This coming Friday and Saturday, or the first Friday and Saturday of the month, with the usual 8 o'clock Masses in the Abbey Church. And as usual, on Friday nights during Lent, at 7 o'clock, we have Stations of the Cross and Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament for those who can make it. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and all ceremonies will be held at the Abbey Church. If weather permitting, it will be outdoors otherwise indoors. Please note in the bulletin the early announcement for Corpus Christi for those of you who have to make arrangements. And also the schedule for Holy Week is included. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. My good people, the middle of Lent, and especially Passion Sunday, the beginning of the end, which is also the beginning of the beginning, is a good time to look into ourselves and examine ourselves and withdraw from the world and the attractions around us. It is all too easy today, especially, to get caught up in the world, in the busyness, in the noise, in the going after everything, in the feeding of self, of the world. We passed a billboard coming up that says silence is weird. Not only do we have to fight ourselves and our own inclinations, we have to fight the world. But I'm afraid too many of us too often get caught up in what we consider matters of consequence. We're so busy sometimes going after the butterflies, which are to us very important, that when we catch up with them, they evaporate into the nothingness they are. We're so busy chasing after those butterflies that when we hear the knocking on the door, we yell out, I'm busy with matters of consequence. And then in our own sweet time, we finally open the door and all we see is a pair of bloody footprints and we realize that is the real matter of consequence. My good people, in this unspiritual world, we have got to take time out to pay attention to the spiritual. We must learn as best as we can to make our everyday lives a spiritual life, spiritual lives. I know it's not easy, but the only matter of consequence is God 
and the salvation of our souls. If we lose our soul, we have lost everything. And times are not getting better. Moment by moment, they're getting worse and worse and worse. Even in the so-called traditional movement, everything seems to be falling apart. The church itself seems to be disappearing. We need to ask ourselves a serious question. What am I going to do? Each one of us ask this question. How strong is my faith? What will I do when the last priest I know disappears? If it should come to that, and it appears to be heading that way. Is my faith strong enough? Am I spiritual enough to withstand the future without a priest at hand? I'm not saying that the priest and the priesthood will disappear, but it does look more and more as though true valid priests are becoming very, very scarce. And if we end up underground, which is very possible, am I prepared for that eventuality? If I can't handle the little nitpicking so-called problems of everyday life when things don't go my way or I lose my job or whatever. If I can't handle that now, what am I going to do when there's no priest close by to help me? What, I'm, what am I going to do when the powers that be knock on my door and say, you join the One World Church or you starve to death. What will each one of us do? My good people, during the rest of this Lent, during this passing, this two weeks of passion, and especially during Holy Week, we need to dig down inside of ourselves, inside of our lives, and get serious, or as the world says, get real, but not real as the world intends it, real as God intends it. Because the moment we die, that's it. There's no second chance, none. There's no bargaining, no excuses, no nothing. Because God's not going to judge us. We are going to judge ourselves. We're going to be standing in front of the all-perfect being who created us. And when we see how perfect he is and how imperfect we are, we are going to withdraw from his presence of our own accord. Now is the time to prepare for that moment. We cannot hope for a deathbed conversion or a deathbed last sacraments or anything. And what if it goes beyond starving what if they actually take us in and torture us like the saints of old? Am I prepared to withstand some of those horrendous tortures? Sometimes death is easier to accept than long, drawn-out 
unexplainable torture. Sometimes a torture will get a person long before death will. And we cannot presume on our own strength. And we cannot presume that God will give us the strength at that moment unless he sees in us something in our hearts that draws him to us. That's the important thing is preparing our hearts. So my good people, I ask you to pray for us as we pray for you. And I ask you each to prepare your hearts as we strive to prepare our hearts for the final resurrection, which is the only thing that is a real matter of consequence. May God bless each one of us and each one of you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.